All right, so get your Badger and Arrow code out. We're going to finish that. Once we're done with that, we're going to start working on our Pi game. Uh, we're going to con continue to work on our game. We're going to do that for a couple days. Um, hopefully, you guys get used to Lisp because I believe I need to look at the schedule and make sure we have somewhat normal schedule next week. But I am going to give you guys a test covering lists. Um, I could give you guys a quiz, but I think a test would help most people's grades more than a test than a quiz. Um, plus, I need to also give you either a test or quiz on Pi Game. So I think a test on list and a quiz on Pi Game, um, or I can give you a test on each and a quiz on each to help boost your. I don't know. I'm excited, but. Um, yeah, I know you guys do have an off-campus learning day next week, so maybe it'll just be an at-home test. Maybe. Next week? or then? Uh, for election day. It's a state holiday? It's a state uh, holiday. The third. Okay. The uh, third. They made it a state holiday. Yeah, they made it a state uh, Pritzker made it a state holiday. It probably is. Ain't no complaints. That's fine. But that's political, so I won't get into that. Anyway, so. Uh, yeah, so let's finish this. So let me pull up. As you guys are pull it, pulling up your code, I shall be pulling up my code. Um, second hours. All right, so this is what you guys should have. We have. Can you share your screen? Oh, thank you. I was waiting for you to 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 to, to catch that, Josh. Good. I don't make mistakes. Um. <laughs> <laughs> so this is what you guys should have. Okay, stop. So I have error. I have my images. I have my x location on my bad guy. Yes. I forgot. What are you just to make like the really Control C. Um, I have that backwards. Um. Yeah. No, that should not be there. That should be there. So this is what you guys should have, I believe. So if this is wrong, let me know. You guys should have the x, the x and y location of bad guys, the image of bad guys, and you're cycling through your arrows. The x location of arrow one, two, three, four, and five. Uh, you guys, should, well, this is saved in my third hour. This is saved in my third hour class. So if you don't have it, that is something. Let me make sure. Or I'm sorry, my second hour class. So this is what you guys should have. If you don't and it's not working, well, that was something, again, over the weekend you guys should have fixed. Check your code. Again, any code we do in class is saved in the student resources folder. So any code when you leave class and doesn't work, it's your responsibility to get it to work because the code that works is online, you have access to it. So I'm just going to keep going and if your code doesn't work, it will see if we can fix it at the end of the hour. Otherwise, uh, it'll be up to you to get it working or to meet with me outside of class. So you guys, what we're going to do, notice the way this code works is we have our bad guys for badger in bad guys, and then for arrow in quiver. For every, for every bad guy on screen, I am checking to see if any of my arrows are, are contacting it. So if I had five arrows in the air, right, just think about it. I have five arrows slowly, very, very slowly moving towards you guys. I would go, Mikey, is any of my five arrows touching you? Okay, Stockton, are any of my five arrows touching? No. I would cycle through each student, and every time I cycle through all of you once, then you guys move your position, my arrows move, and then I check again, and I just go through. So that's how this is working. That's why we have a for loop inside of a for loop, because for every bad guy, we have to check for every arrow. Does that make sense conceptually? Yeah. Okay. Also, we went back. I want to go up here again, just a little review. What are these two highlighted numbers? What do they represent? Ezra. Is that supposed to 
starting position of badgers? It is the starting position of badgers, yep. And what specifically is the 15? It's the what location? X, X and then the Y location, and then what's this? Image. The, the image, yes, thank you. I appreciate the, 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 the quote, the air quotes, because technically it's not. If we wanted to add health and different bad guys, did I go over this with you? Maybe. All I would do is I would put, there, there's, there's different ways you can do it. You can have every bad guy have three health, and if you were to do that, you would just have three. And then we code when an arrow hits a badger, we don't remove the badger, that badger health goes down one. And then if that is zero, then delete it. Does that make sense? I'll go through that in a minute, but all right, let's just let's just go through this. Let me get the arrows working and then we'll go back to I'll add some stuff. So notice in our code. 15, 53, 65, 48, 15, 53, 65, 48, 15, 53, 65, 48. What do you guys notice about our arrows? Same location. Same location. They don't move. Why is that? We didn't code them to move, right? With bad guy, we move it, but we never move our arrows. So, if we want them to move diagonally, what do we need to do? Plus x what? No, 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 say it again. Plus x plus y. Plus x plus y. Yes, we need to add 2x and add 2y. So, we're going to assume, um, just for simplicity's sake and coding, we're going to subtract. So, the arrows are moving up and to the left. Uh, so... But, but what we do is when we do our math in our actual game, we have four line, four or five lines of code that will figure out how much to rotate the arrow, and it points the arrow at, it's not a strict 45 degree angle, it varies depending on which way you're facing. So again, we're going to go, that will be code that, I give you, you copy and paste, and that's all you need. Uh, but for now, we're going to go uh, arrow bracket 0 and arrow bracket 1 minus equal, and we'll just do minus equal 3, I guess. Uh, so that's going to go 7. So that's going to be 8. I'll just make those the same. Minus equals seven. So hopefully, we'll at least see a change. Okay, 843, 136, negative 629. Okay, so our arrows are moving like, like our badgers. Uh, 1550, 1550. So I want this to be... 22. No, that's not going to work. I'll leave that 1550. Okay, so what do we now need to check? I'm going to take off the screen. Uh, you, that's not the, well, yeah. So how do we do that? When do we need to check to see if they go off screen? Every cycle of what? Every cycle of badger? No, arrow. Every cycle of arrow. So yeah. right right in this for loop, right? Yeah. And how am I going to do that? Um, Remember, so copying and pasting code is totally fine. The same as the, the bad guy. Yeah, if arrow, yeah. If arrow zero is less than zero. If arrow is zero, then we do quiver, remove, arrow. While you guys are typing that, I'm going to double check to make sure it works. Yep. Awesome. So now we notice we only have four arrows. That's it. No, that's not it. 
That's something we didn't do in the other class, so I'll make sure we do that. So, what? Well, well, now we have to make sure if they if it collides. Now, this was on the advanced list problems that you guys did. So, if you guys want to pull that code up, feel free. Um, but we need to code if they collide. Right now, we are if the x and y locations are the exact same, then delete it. In our game, we'll actually have a rectangle around each picture, and if those rectangles overlap, then delete. So right now, this is like pixel perfect. You'd have to be like, they'd have the, the top left corner would have to overlap exactly precisely the same pixel at the same time, which is very, 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 very unlikely to happen. However, because we're testing and we're kind of coding a concept, that's okay. So do you guys have... Do you guys know how to do that? How to code if they if they're in the same position? You guys coded this, so you guys have this answer. Can you yeah. just test the position? See if the x and y coordinates of both of them are equal to each other? You can. So how would I code that, Peter? If uh, arrow. Well, hang on. First, you got to tell me where it is. Where am I? Am I doing it inside? That for this for this this if statement. It has to be in the four arrows in quiver. Four arrows in quiver. Okay, so if now what? Then you you're gonna want to check to see if the arrow x coordinate is equal to the uh, badger or bad guy. If they have two squares, that badger x coordinate, and then check have like an and to check if the oh. y coordinates are the same too. Like this. That's pixel perfect. You can also do, just to simplify that a little bit, you can do if arrow and it's the same thing. Yeah, because it's like because this is saying give if the first L index and the second index are equal to the first index and the second index. What this is saying is, if the first two indexes are the same as the first two indexes. Do you guys remember list splicing with the colon? Yeah. All right. I will. I. Oh darn it. Copy. All right. So real quick. So quiver is a list of lists. Does that make sense? If I put quiver colon 0 to 2, oops, 0 colon 2, I'm going to get the first two objects because this is the starting point, and just like range, this is the end point. But it'd be just like range, it's minus, it's, this end point is 1 past the end point, so it's B plus 1. But I, I don't know how to explain that. So that gives us 0 and 1 index. If you get rid of the 0, well, if you don't tell it where to start, where does it default? It starts at 0. OK? So what we're saying is if the first two objects of arrow equal the same two objects of badger. Make sense? OK. So what doesn't make sense, Ezra? Could you put random in there? Why would you put random in there? <laughs> what? I don't know. Okay, so let's. So if I have arrow equals one comma two, and I have badger equal one one comma two, does that make sense? I have a list of two numbers. Yes. So if I do arrow bracket 0 to 2, that's going to print 1 and 2. I can change this to 1, and that will just print from the first index, which is 0, the 0 index, to the 1 index. But just like range, if I want 0 to 100, I have to put 0 to 101. So if I want 0 to 2, 
So if I want 0, 1, 2 index, I have to put 0 to 3. So if I have arrow B and I have badger B, arrow bracket colon 3, it's going to give me 1, 2, the first three objects. Badger 5 gives us the first five objects. So it's actually not that like, If I put three, that says it starts at the third index and go to the end. So one, two, three, or zero, one, two, that this is the third index and it goes to the end. So what our code is saying is arrow bracket two and badger bracket 2, if those are the same, that means what? If they're in the same location, we need to delete them. Does everyone understand that? Are there questions? Comments? Concerns? Um, Yes. So, so if these two things are the same, we're going to do quiver dot remove arrow, and then because I'm not lazy, I'm efficient. I'm going to copy that. And what I do just to make sure, because we don't have any graphics, we don't, we can't see the arrows disappear. I'm going to print. So now I know that the arrow and badger collided. This if statement worked, and both arrow and badger are removed. So if we run it, No, I just have to change this to 2257. Okay. That's the code we just wrote. So if you guys need to see it, it's right there. Whoa. What? Yeah, well, I'm trying, like I said, I'm trying to hard code this so that. I'm just not seeing this arrow and badger collided. So I had 1550, 1550. No. Hang on. Let me see what I because I think I had this work in the other class. So let me just check what I did there. Oh. Okay. Yeah. This badger zero minus equals seven here should not be right there. It should be, where did I put it over here? Um, there. Yeah, I put it right here. But hang on, that's still not working. 1550. Alright, 22. Now I think I got it. 
There we go. Okay, so again, I just had to hard code the starting point of our arrow so that it would work. So we have our x location of bad guys 15 and 50 is the xy position. The image is badger. Then it says 22 and 57. If our starting point is 22 and 57 and we subtract 7 from each coordinate, what numbers are we left with? If we start at 22 and 57, what? 15 and 50, which is the exact same location of our bad guy. So then we get arrow and badger collided. So now I know this will work. I know that my arrows, when they get in the exact same location as my badger, boom, they disappear. Make sense? And then it gives us a new bad guy. Questions? Comments? Concerns? Well, you can look at this. All you can you can download this and find your issue if you want, or you can wait till after class. What doesn't work? Are you getting an error or just your num? What's what's wrong? Name error. What does it say? Name error. What? Oh, you found it. Okay. So, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to help you guys with your final. So, if I wanted to have this right here, all right, I'm going to, this is my bad guy. This is every attribute we have given our bad guys, an XY position and an image. Does that make sense? If I want to add another bad guy, I would go and then I could add another bad guy. This right here is the essence of our bad guys. If you understand this, this will make the final project a lot easier. What I mean by that is by understanding that that is my bad guy. Everything about my bad guy is contained in that list of lists. Um, I can have different images. I can have different images equal different types of health. I can have different bad guys be different for diff I can have them be different images, different health, different speeds, different strength, different uh, whatever I want. However you want to distinguish your bad guys, you can do. Josh? So would you have to make separate lists for different bad guys for like say if they're lost health, like if a different image, like a weaker looking image? Nope. If that's not a different list, it's all in No, it's all in one list. That list right there that's highlighted, that 1550 badger, the three attributes currently that we have that distinguish our badgers are an X, or our bad guys is an X position, a Y position, and an image. The X and Y position you really can't change, but you can change images, you can change speeds, you can change strengths. So um, give me an attribute that you would like to have different in your bad guys. So what? More health. So let's work on health. So a badger, I think, should have more health than a rat, right? Okay, for sure. Uh, so we'll do three. A rat has two. And we'll do a third one. Flea. Uh, not a flea. I was going to do ant. Okay. But um, let's not do rat. Which has more health, a badger, gopher, or raccoon? Raccoon. Raccoon. Okay, so this should be a gopher then. And then... Uh, ant, and that's got one hit point. This makes sense to you. Now we have an image and a health. Tracking with me? Yes. So every time we want to spawn a new bad guy, this is what we do. Right? You see we have our choice of bad guy images. Do you guys have this? You should. I'm going to get rid of that, and I'm just going to make that image and then help. So I'm going to put two variables that have not been created yet. 
So if I were to run this, I'd get an error. But we're not going to run it just yet. In our bad, in our spawning of bad guys, we're going to put image to equal a random choice. Notice what I did there. All I did is I, I took the random choice from the actual appending and I put it to a variable. Make sense? Yes, no, maybe so. If no one has questions, I'm going to keep going. Okay. Yes, who said wait? Up. Now what I'm doing is if image equal equal rat, and then I'm going to go if, yeah, this will help you, so if you have it, um, not rat. Why do I keep doing rat? Badger, gopher. Notice I'm not writing this in syntax like it's wrong. So and and I'm going to make these ellis. I only wanted to check once. All right, so you guys have these four lines, or you're working on them. Don't forget to copy and paste. So for Badger, health is going to be what again? Three. Health is two for Gopher. Health is one for Raccoon. And because Mikey said raccoon, or for ant, raccoons are evil, they get five health. Oh no, they get four health. You guys see what these lines are doing? Yes. This is randomly picking an image for our badger, for our bad guy. And depending on whatever image that is, we're going to assign a health. So if it randomly selects badger, that badger is going to have three health. If it selects ant, that ant is going to have one health. If it selects gopher, it's going to have three hit. Three or gopher's two health. Does that make sense, Sonny? Does okay. Ever anyone? Mikey, you look a little lost. No, I'm just studying. Okay. If that doesn't make sense, please let me know. Ezra. Can you scroll up just a little to where we put in, like, yeah. Technically, you don't need that, but that was just, just show, that's just to start with. So this means that the first three bad guys on screen will be a badger, gopher, and an ant starting at those locations, period. Every time you start your game. So if you don't want that, you would have this be an empty list, and you just have it start counting down and start making it with, with these here. Make sense? Last thing, and then we'll start implementing this. I don't know when we get out of here anymore, so... I'm just going to go to the Probably bell. Soon, I think it's 38, so I think I have it for eight more minutes. Does this all make sense so far? Yes. Please. Yeah. Okay. You think, you what? You think we get out at what? 936. 936? All right. So if we have health, and I want my characters to not disappear the second they get hit by an arrow. I can't just have them when they collide. I can't just remove them. Does that make sense? Yeah, you run code for the health. I have to run code. So no matter what, if an arrow hits a bad guy, I want the arrow to disappear. So I don't need to do anything with quiver.removeArrow. What do I need to do here? Every time the arrow hits, what do I want to have happen, Ezra? Oh, yes. So health minus equal one. 
Wait, it's not health. What what should it be? Because we want this to be unique to the individual badger or bad guy. Oh. So hang on, hang on, Ezra. Wait, would it be badgers? Um, not not badgers. Bad guy. Bad guy. Yep. Colon what? Colon three. No. Zero, one, two, three. Yes. So it would be badger three, bad guy three minus equal one. Then we need an if statement that says if bad guy bracket three is less than or equal to zero, remove bad guy. And we can put print bad guy dead. And instead of, we'll put this. Just to make sure that our code's working. So now we'll run it. Oh, it should be badger, my bad. Oh, I'm hitting the wrong button. There we go. It should be, yeah, it should be Badger 3, not Bad Guy 3. Why is it Badger? Because for Badger and Bad Guys, if you have Bad Guy or Bad Guys, that is the third index or the second Bad Guy on screen, not the health of that badger. Okay. So if we look at the code, we get the x location of bad guy, the y location of bad guy, the images of badger, badger and arrow collided, arrow gone. We still have a healthy raccoon, or we still have a healthy badger. The way I'm going to code this to make sure it works, that it will actually disappear the bad guy, what do you guys think the easiest way to test this would be? We know the arrow is going to hit, and we want to just see, will the thing die? Will it disappear? Set the health to 1. Set the health to 1. So I'm going to come up here to Badger. Real quick, just change that Badger's health to 1. And there we go. So the code works, and bada bing, bada boom. Are we going to add like, the burrows now? The what? The burrows that the batteries don't go from over here. No, that's basically the, the no. The last thing I want to do in just the last few minutes, speed. Do we want to have different speeds? Yeah. Okay. So how quickly do badgers move? Fast. Very fast. I need a number. Oh, it's twelve. Twelve. Because currently they move seven. Oh, okay. So like uh ten. Okay, so badgers move 10, gophers move how much? 8, ants move uh, 16. Wait, I feel like ants should be slower. No, they're fast. They're fast. Right, so now I'm just going to go through and I'm adding speed as a variable. Uh, badgers. And what about raccoons? Are raccoons fast or slow? Speed. So 7, we'll just keep them at 7. So, if I want my characters on screen to move different speeds, what do I need to change? Currently, everything goes negative 7. Everything moves at 7. Need to set that as a variable. And what do I need to set that variable to, Peter? Uh, the thing with the list. And the index of the list is? Uh, counting and power. Badger post, bracket four. Are you gonna post up this updated code? I'm not answering that question. Because every code I write in class gets put online as I do it. Does it? I save it and I just it constantly is uploading a new version. That's really cool. That is cool. So literally every time I run it, it saves it and it's saved on the cloud. So every time I run it, you guys can download that version. That's amazing. So, like that's that's how it's been this whole year. 
every, every code I do in class is there. So this is working. If your code does not work, you need to get it working for tomorrow. Either meeting with me or looking at this. Um, that is your homework, is to make sure this is running and working. Wait, where do we find the running code? It's in the student resources folder on, on campus. Thank you. Uh, you're welcome. Josh, you're good to take off. I'll see ya. One second. Oh, look, the stove is covering things.